All right, we are at uh, section um, 18.4, thermal expansion of solids and liquids. Uh, so let's uh, share the PowerPoint. And uh, you can see on this image the uh, uh, these expansion joints. I know I live in the medical center, and on my way to St. Philip's College, I go on the upper deck of uh, – uh, I-10 to do where it joins with I-35 and as you're on the upper deck you you can hear your tires going over these expansion joints. Uh, without these joints to separate sections of roadway on bridges the surface would buckle due to thermal expansion on very hot days or crack due to contraction on very cold days. Um, here's a the side of a building the long vertical joints is filled with a soft material that allows the wall to expand and contract as the temperature of the bridges, bricks changes. So in the opening uh, image where you saw the, uh, the, the sidewalk buckle, the, those sidewalk panels were probably put in without any type of expansion joints. So when it got really hot, out of the normal, they, they just buckled. Um, so uh, uh, So let's uh, continue on. What's what's happening is that you you have the uh, you have these uh, the molecules, and as the molecules agitate, as they vibrate uh, with kinetic energy, they uh, they uh, the more they vibrate, the more they expand. And uh, there's a footnote at the bottom. Where's my? Uh, there's a footnote at the bottom of. Uh, uh, at the bottom of page 488 in this section for thermal expansion. More precisely, thermal expansion arises from the asymmetrical na nature of the potential energy curve for the atoms in a solid as shown in figure 1511A. So you go back to 1511A and you, you can see the, that it's, it's very sharp coming down and then it, it, it's asymmetrical, uh, the energy curve. Uh, the oscillators uh, were truly harmonic, the average atomic expansion would not change regardless of the amplitude of the vibration. So uh, it's, the vi it's this vibration, um, the asymmetric vibration of the atoms that uh, uh, causes the expansion. Um, let me get back to, that's, uh, it was right out of the text. Let me get to the, um, uh, the slides. Okay, the model. Um, model at atoms is being connected by stiff springs at ordinary temperatures atoms and solids uh, oscillate about their equilibrium position with an amplitude amplitude of approximately 10 to the minus 11 meters and a frequency of about 10 to the 13 hertz uh, the average spacing between atoms is at about 10 to the minus 10 meters as the temperature of solid the solid increases atoms oscillate with greater amplitudes and the average sep separation between the between them increase and the object expands. Uh, let's, why does it do that? Let's go back. Okay, I guess that's, no, there's a, there's an image that's missing. There it is. Let's go back. Uh, I don't know why it's been doing that. Uh, but alpha is the, uh, the uh, average coefficient of linear expansion, delta L over L initial, whatever the length was initially, uh, divided by delta T, and the delta T here uh, is it can be expressed in in uh, the this since it's a relative, it could be Kelvin or cel Celsius. You don't need the absolute value. Uh, L is the um, uh, the uh, uh, L in initial delta L is the change, and delta T is the change in in uh, degrees in the, the uh, alpha is expressed in inverse uh, degrees Celsius. Um, so L final minus L initial, uh, we're just uh, expanding this. You take uh, T to the other side, uh, de delta T, T final minus T initial uh, times the alpha uh, times the Li, it'll give you the delta L, which is, L final minus L initial. So the um, uh, delta L is equal to alpha Li delta T. Um, that is our uh, 
equation for the uh, for the thermal expansion. The change in the length is equal to the alpha, the co average coefficient of linear expansion, times the initial length times the change in temperature. Um, okay, now let's uh, do a little test here. Is the washer is heated? Well, there's no test. They already given it to you. If the washer is heated, all dimensions increase, including the radius of the hole. So it would be this. It would expand the same as if it were filled in. Um, so as as you uh, at temperature initial, you have the inside radius of the washer is A, and the outside radius is B. Uh, as you increase a increases to a plus delta a and uh b increases to b plus delta b so it would be the same as if it were filled in the whole thing is going to increase um okay now here's some average coefficients of uh uh expansion uh aluminum 24 times 10 to the 6 brass and bronze 19 times 10 to the 6 concrete 12 times 10 to the 6 and you can look these over yourself here's some liquids and gases, 1.4, 1.5 times 10 to the fourth for acetone. Alcohol is 1.12 times 10 to the fourth. Um, gasoline is pretty high, 9.6 times 10 to the four. Remember that. Remember the gasoline is 9.6 9 times 10 to the fourth. Um, turpentine is also high, 9.0 times 10 to the fourth. Um, okay. Now, volume expansion. Uh, delta V is equal to the beta uh, VI, uh, v, you know, initial volume times delta T. Well, um, the uh, we're just going to apply the alpha uh, three times. So delta uh, VI plus delta V is equal to the length plus the increase in length, the width plus the increase in width, and the height plus uh, increase in height, the delta H. Now, if, if you look at, if we go back to uh, this, if you see delta L is equal to A L I delta T, and we're going to use that for all dimensions. Um, so L equals A L delta T um, times W plus A uh, W delta T times H plus A H delta T. So we pull out the L W and H, you, know, you multiply it by one. Um, you know, uh, you get L L W H times one plus A delta T cubed, because there's three of them. Um, so V I is equal to uh, one plus. Uh, if you expand that, if you multiply that out, you get one plus three alpha delta T plus three alpha delta T squared plus alpha delta t cubed well the uh in practical applications the the change in temperature delta um alpha delta t is much much less than one so for most cases uh, for typical values of delta t less than 100 degrees we could we can neglect we can ignore the terms uh, alpha delta t squared and alpha delta t cubed so that um uh well let's let's uh we're not there yet uh we're going to ignore them we divide both sides by vi um and you, you get uh you get this equation on the left hand side you get vi over vi plus delta v over vi well that's one plus delta v over vi and you have a one on the other side so you can remove that one from both sides so delta v divided by vi is equal to three alpha delta t plus the uh, squared term plus the cube term and this is where uh the the squared term and the third the cube term we can pretty much ignore those because those are we can neglect them so uh it comes down to um delta v over vi is equal to three alpha delta t so uh, delta V is equal to three alpha V I delta T. So beta is equal to three A. Um, the volume expansion is equal to three A. Um, okay, if you're asked to make a very sensitive glass thermometer, which of the following working liquids would you choose? 
Uh, well, do you remember which one I said was a really high, uh, uh, had a very high coefficient of expansion? It was gasoline. Uh, and sure enough, there it is, gasoline. Okay, two spheres are made of the same metal and have the same radius, but one is hollow and the other is solid. The spheres are taken through the same temperature increase. Which sphere expands more? Well, let's think about our little washer that expands. We'll see that they expand by the same amount. Um, okay, the unusual behavior of water. Um, most things decrease. Um, as you decrease the temperature, they, uh, most things decrease in, in volume uh, and become, um, uh, you know, they become smaller. But uh, this blown up portion of the graph shows that the maximum density of water occurs at four degrees. So before four degrees, you is, is your uh, cooling water, the, the, uh, the cooler water goes to the, the bottom and the warmer water rises to the top and it, it cools and it, uh, you get this circulation till finally it's all uniform and then as it falls below four degrees, it becomes less dense. Um, yeah, it's why ice ice floats because the the uh, the ice is less dense than than the liquid water. Um, and uh, so, if you look at a a, a lake, the uh, you know above four degrees, that that same effect is happening. You're cooling the water. And the, uh, the surface water falls to the bottom and the, the warm water from below rises to the top until it cools. And then finally, once you get below four degrees, that, that water that's at the surface becomes less dense and stays at the top and uh, uh, eventually becomes ice. And it, it actually, it floats and it, it, uh, it freezes and the water below never gets below four degrees so it it it's fortunate providential some might say uh because the uh um it preserves the the fish uh and all the aquatic life that's in the water um the uh uh so that's uh that's the nature of water the unusual wa nature of Water is the only one that becomes less dense uh, as it freezes below four degrees uh, C. And from there, we're going to go to the macroscopic description of an ideal gas. But let's stop it here.